you have a long list of films. Uh, le le why don't we just start with um, whatever you, where you want? Everest, uh, because yesterday we we spoke to Dario Marinelli. Yeah, yeah, the composer. The yeah. music. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. Very nice man. He's yeah, a lovely man. Yeah, he worked. Um, just to me, I worked a few times in our films. We've done yes, I, I noticed that. Yes. Um, so um, and on. He said it was amazing what you did again, mm -hmm. uh, but he felt a bit pushed against the wall uh, through this enormous wind and yeah. stuff going on. <coughs> um, maybe you could talk a bit about what you bring in in terms of ideas about sound design mm. and what is being pushed or asked for by, by the director. Well, on Everest, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, for example, yeah. it's very specific. I, I mean, it, the thing with Everest is it is a true story. So the premise is, is you've got to try and make it real. Y you know, it's that some films, when you've designed them, you, de you, you design looking in. You design looking into them. And other films, you're trying to design them that you are you are in it. Y y you know what I mean? And I think when, when you're traveling with a, when you're on a film with a, uh, uh, you know, bolts in, in, in the way it's shot, it's not shot too, not multiple shots quickly. But the sound, you've got to be inside the film, you've got to feel that you're taking part so you understand this journey and the predicament that they will get themselves into. And I, and that's, you know, so the weather, the weather and the, and the, the whole thing about the weather, how it changes and how they react to it is, is, is about you feeling it yourself, not just hearing it, but you feeling it. And we have, I mean, I've shown it. When we did a, a temp a temp mix and a preview, people said they felt cold and they felt that that ice of the thing was hitting them and that they were in it and it, and it exhausted them. Now, that is what we wanted to do. You so know. how how do you create a cold wind as, instead of a gentle wind, for example? Yeah, well, it's 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 well, it's, it's the tonal things. We all know. Well, the great thing about nearly all of us, and I say this about everything with sound design, and I break 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 sound design to simplicity which is our human how we perceive things during the course of our lives and now this is because I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy in that respect you know what I mean because I started right from the beginning where we, you know we were sort of like we were on just film and pencils and sellotape but it is we've all been like say for Everest you know we've all been in those situations where we've been cold we've felt cold how we hear it how we feel things on our face what that does to us you know we also have fear we have joy we have and, and every one of these different emotions we have makes us in my mind, perceive things in in a certain way, and mm. uh, you know, from growing up, when you're scared, you or you're hyper, you get side, you hide, you hear things slightly different, you hear yourself, you becomes more internal, and basically that's my way of looking at a film of where where we're supposed to be, where we're supposed to be in it, you know, where we're in it or with that person or, or or we're looking onto it or whatever, you know. So and then if we've got to be that, those people. It's got to be excitement, obviously. It's, you know the, the whole thing, Hollywood, the whole thing. But you've got to be there. So um, Everest is about you being um, you being in the middle of, the, of of what happens, of the storms and things like that. So in a way, it's not uh, about how it really is, but how you might perceive it as. Yeah, as and you know, for we sort of like read things about how they felt it was, and when the storms come in, they say it felt like a jet engine, like a jet coming up. So when the big storm hits. It comes up the side of Eris and it breaks, you know, because obviously it's coming up the side, and there's that moment it breaks out into the open, mm. and that's sort of a release of it, you know. It's like it's like a you know waveform. You know, they, they were to break over, and you get this <laughs> on a wave, you get this force hitting it. Mm. It's the same thing I think up a mountain, you know, when the wind's coming in and it's working its way up and it shoots over the top. There's a big sequence in it where it does hit, and uh, it feels like that, and the actual sheer power of it nearly it will it, with sound, the power of it hits you in the chest and knocks you back the way that they climb and say it does hit you know it forces you back mm. and we try to do that with the sound because obviously the pitch you see them and they get thrown a little bit but without the sound and you you can't you can't have that actually someone hitting you so that you have to create it with, with the force of the sound so you pick up gestures uh, which one can see in the image mm. somebody, somebody yeah and you have to punched. yeah uh, and, and you have to figure out how the way that's going to make you feel or what's the sound that makes you feel that mm. I mean with Everest it's multiple layers to get the wind to sound because it's okay putting wind on but obviously we we were doing a sort of like an immersive mix on it in, uh, and 
So basically you have to have the winds that are totally different. So you're turning in and out. So they're completely changing all the time. So you have motor and you don't just, we don't just put like, well, we don't put just beds, you know, a, a heavy wind or what, we don't just keep them there. We have them and then we, then we're over, we are overlap and then move them over. So they're always moving. So it's not just one sound. Okay. So, so it's a multiple that, and that we don't just carry that one on there because where people, some young people, when they're, you know, starting, go wrong is they put lots and lots of layers. And then what happens to that? It becomes mud. So um, you have to figure out a shape. You're trying to make a shape with this, because it is. I mean, if you're walking through the wind, it's, it's basic. You go like this, you set turn that way, it sort of turns that difference. You move that way, you move to that, you get you, the here. If you're walking down that wall and you go to that open bit, it would sound different there than it would there. So with an Everest, if, you know, if they were on the side of the mountain, you saw the gray, you'd hear this and you'd hear a base impact because it would be hitting the base. Mm -hmm. You move to the other side, it'd be open, it'd be thinner and you'd hear the ice. We did a lot about ice flying past. Mm -hmm. The thing with the ice flying past is that it gives you contact. So you're not only hearing it, but you know when you're in a storm, if you've ever been in a hailstorm or a storm with damp snow, it comes past and it, it hits your face and you feel it. You feel it, but you also hear it and it's got that little needly thing that heals. So what we want to try and do is not only create the sound, which is one thing, but we wanted to make feel that that you were feeling it, like you were in it, and that you would you would you would get because the that sound you know, with the massive storms and the, and the highs and the movement makes you feel cold, you know. And it's a, so it's a multiple layer thing to try and you know, it's, and you only know when you're getting it because you've got to feel it yourself, you know. And where where do you get the source material? Some everywhere. We make a load of it, we, you know. Throughout Everest, we, it was quite fun. We started off with, and we've got thousands of winds of guys. We've recorded in different places. We recorded over in Israel. We recorded up the what's uh, one of the guys we had recorded up the Alps. Specifically for this film, or do you well, we've had them. To we, yeah, well, we've, we've got films that we've recorded winds when we just one was one of the records was going there. Alam was going there, and he he said he's going to go there just to just to create loads of winds. We had, you know, you just create loads of winds. And it's interesting creating shooting winds that you um, to shoot winds you need props because if if a wind's going if it's not hitting anything it's not making a noise you know so uh the shooting winds with like um colanders tv aerials uh anything put a hole in it don't put a hole up put a, put it out there so it has to go around it um because that's where you get the noise of the winds from like i was explaining when it hits the side of mount the reason it's getting that noise is because it's hitting there and when that same wind would go wouldn't above that point it would sound different but it's the same wind it's you know, it's, it's there moving so uh, it's quite interesting and we, we would put things up and we built tents you know obviously within the camps we built these we rebuilt all the tents and we the rattle and put mics everywhere we froze big chunks of ice we froze there we put their um uh, suits there they you know we put those sprayed them and we put them in deep freezes so when they were cold they would have to you know we've, when we shot sound effects we shoot them with, with when it when it frozen so you get the ice sound so um we got um multiple uh meters of ready-made snow to lift and put them in the theater you know so that we we could we we're trying to you did we try to do everything so it's real you know and and even the snow first steps what you do when you hit snow is you find out you get sometimes it could be a soft layer and then it gets the icy layer underneath so we would shoot two or three layers of sound for one footstep so yeah, the the half, then you get the squeak, and then you get the crack. So with so that you would making those together, you would get the, the proper sound rather than just one soft sound, you know. So that would be my next question: or <clears throat> the the whole folly art. Um, that's usually for specific sound, like you just described. Mm -hmm. It's very finely tuned. Yeah. And, uh, well, folly, I think. I mean, like everyone, when I do these, when I do the interviews, do these talks, I talk from my perspective how I've done the job over my whole career. Whether it be right, whether it be wrong, it's what I do. You know, it's like you know, if you sort of know what's there to be used, and you use it in the way that you use it. Doesn't. And we use phony is a sort of word. Phony means that it's like from a guy that you walk footsteps. We use the studio, and we may shoot uh, like gorilla style foley, if you like. Basically, foley is stuff that you go and make yourself, and you shoot, and whatever it is. And we shoot lots of it, perhaps in the theatre, but we shoot lots of it wild. And then it's an idea to get as many of the sounds that we can. Yeah. And then we, we and then we put them in part of the design and we shot some somewhere else. So sometimes there's a classic photo, you might get the footsteps in it, but then we will 
you know, we would use the studio or sometimes outside to make some of the ice. Like we would crush ice and we would put mics everywhere or what, and we would throw it across to try and get these tinkles. And we'd try it with ice, we'd try it with sand, we'd try it with ash, we'd try it with fine grain, with everything to try and get the sound of like, not only that, but to hit the size of tents. And we gather all this, it's like a chef, isn't it? You're gathering all these things. You, it's not, we don't go funny and just shoot, we just shoot for that and have that. We, um, there's an effects shoot we have, and there's a footstep, sometimes a, a classic, well, like the moves that you have to have sometimes, uh, you know, for your foreign versions and things. So that, but we, so we sort of use it in a, in a, as a, a tool for it, and not how it used to be done. I, remember, I can remember when I started, that everything would just be shot in the Foley Theatre and there'd be a couple of artists there and the guy in there and they'd just walk through it. And it it's gone, I, in my opinion, not knocking what they've done before because the wherewithal, the amount of tracks and is different. We sort of try to treat it in another way. It's like gathering all the ingredients as well. Mm. And but So some of the Foley be shot on the stage. Some of it, if you like, will be shoot wild everywhere. Like we had a lot of footsteps. We did a, another film years ago where uh, it was in the snow and we shot a load of footsteps in the Alps, you know. So we, we utilise all, all things that we've shot from around the world or wherever all the time to make all this up. So uh, I get the impression that digital post-production made all this much easier than before. Yeah, I suppose it gives you the, yeah, to record, you know, I mean, you can just take a, we can, in, in multiple times, multiple channels, this, tapes don't run out, the quality's great, the guy, you can use fantastic different mics, or, you know, there's a lot you can record. Sometimes... Sometimes we go overboard and we shoot far too much than we can ever, ever go through and listen to, you know what I mean? Because we might have the mics running for <laughs> hours, you know what I mean? When sometimes we'll have eight or nine mics running at once on one particular thing. And the idea is that is you could, it's not, from my point, it's not an actual science. You have a concept of what you want and you're not quite sure. Well, I'm not quite sure exactly what we're going to get. I can't say we're going to do that and it's going to be the right sound for that and that's it. It's a starting point. And I think when you've got to learn, when you become better at the job, you have a inspiration, you have a thought process, and then that thought process will lead on to something else. And you go, yeah, there, but it goes on to something else. And that's a, that's a good fun part of it, you know. And, I mean, you have 30 years of experience now, or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, 14 nearly, <laughs> but we won't say. Yeah. <laughs> so, when uh, big productions come to you, or director, mm -hmm. and says, okay, this is the script, or the rough cut, mm. uh, do they just trust you, or do, do well, they give you specific no, one of the I think where I've got to my career now is that we have a concept. You I mean, mean uh, for your company here, or as as you, you yeah, as yeah, me and, and all and all the I mean, my team. I built a team with me who are, is important. Yeah, I think you know everything we do is the sum of all parts. You've only got to look at the end of a roller to realize there is not one person that does everything in any department. You know, and uh, so that's. You know, that's a given in making films. It's a collaborative art, and I think when people collaborate more, you get the better films, in my opinion. You know, or when and it's trust. Not that somebody does that, but they trust them to do that, and then you know, it's building the people that you trust within a style that you want to work. You know, there has to be a there has to be a style. But normally we talk and we have a, a conversation. I do, and it's 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 like a it's not about well, we want that there, we want that there, and that we don't do any of that. It's it's like I think I started a conversation it's about what we want it to be where do we want it to come from you know how real do we want to make it because you know some films you don't want them to be real real because it's because it's they're not for that they've got to be sort of in another world of their own somewhere else um but uh, on a film like everest you want to create you know you want it as as exciting and as cinematic but with a with with a, a quality of you know an integrity to the how it was there at the time you know and so that's where, and then you what you do, and I find from my point of view and the teams that then you have no boundaries. Someone's not, I mean, you know, someone gives me, they've got to do that, you've got that, you're sort of restricted within a scope, and you're thinking, oh, well, okay, well, you want, we can only go that far, we can't go that far, you know. So the directors, you know, like Danny Boyle and Alfonso Curran and people, they, it's a concept, and they, they want you to go as far as you, your mind will go, and then sometimes we'll go past that point. I think. The great thing is sometimes like working with Danny and people, like we go to a point where we break it to, so we know that we've broken it to bring it back. How do you know how far you can go until you go there? Is playing safe. And to be honest, if you look at all the films I've done with him, so for instance, and, and with Alfonso and, you know, even the Wachowskis and these people, you go past the point 
and then you, you know where your point is, but you think you've got there, and then you, oh man, we've broken it. Mm. But you don't know you've broken it when you run it over a long period of time, mm. because you, 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 you're trying to get, oh, the sound design of a film is, you know, obviously is it, the sound design of a film is the dialogue, is the music, is the sound design, it's, it's all those three put together, because they're all, you're hearing them all, and it's the shape of where you're going to get to, where you want people to go up, where you want to go down, how you want them to feel. And that's, uh, that's, you know, it's not just that sound that makes you a sound designer. That brings me, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you how you, d sometimes it's, you're accredited as sound design, sometimes as uh, supervising sound editor. Sound yeah. editor. Well, the, cr the credits are basically, it's one of the same, but, you know, it's, it's, Basically, what that is, it says that you know you're sort of in charge of the data, you run the thing, and you you know you're the head of the the design of the film. So you're running the film. Now, credits have changed. I mean, they and they will probably change again. You know, because they've, they've, they used to be called dubbing editors when I started. You know, and then they've come a sound editor. Then there's a supervisor that came from America, the supervisor sound editor. Then the sound designer credit is. It, it sort of came in later, you know. Well, merge stuff, is it, more or less? Yeah, it's a down designer, but basically, if I'm truthful, that you're, but you have to have them because it shows, you know, you're the leader of the film, so you have to be, it's what it is, and it's what you've done and what you are on the film. But basically, it means that, you know, you're working on it, you're, you're sort of in charge of, of the concept, the sound design of the film, and you're running the whole film for it. You know, you are, you're the, that, that, that person that's been given the job to do, and you're in charge of it, of, of running the whole thing. And uh, but it, it's changed because there's sound, like sound effects editors. We used to be, you know, sound effects. If you were a sound editor in those days and you were called the sound editor doing the film, you'd be doing that job because you would be in charge of designing that film, you know. Mm -hmm. But the titles changed. And it, I think it came from it came from America and Grady that, you know, you're in charge. You had to have that credit because someone else, that's what the studio, you know, that's what you should have. I mean, I you know I can remember one of the execs of Fox told me you have to have these credits. You have, this is what you do now, and for the studios over here, this is what you know. You, it's an outside thing, really. You know, 